Welcome to building a Swift UI app with Firebase. Hello, how's it going, everybody? I hope you had a great Firebase Summit Day at Firebase, uh, in New York City. I'm Charlotte Liang. I am a software engineer on the Firebase team, and my job is to make it easy for you building mobile apps on Apple platforms. Perhaps some of you have already started building a Swift UI app. Uh, I'm really curious to learn about your development experiences with Firebase. So after this talk, I'll be around the Ask Firebase launch uh, during the, by the end of the day. So don't hesitate, come talk to me. I'm looking forward to see some of you there. As you heard from the keynote, our mission is to make it easy for you building mobile apps and grow your users. Firebase is trying to remove the building block so you can focus on what you're really good at, making an app that your users love. And we try to make it easy to integrate our SDKs across all Apple platforms, from TV OS, Mac OS, iPad OS, to watch OS. So you can expand your business across the whole Apple universe. And thanks to the nature of Swift UI, it is possible to write the same code that can run around different Apple devices. Let's talk about Swift for a moment. The language helps eliminate a lot of errors which results in a much faster development cycle. With a simple code base, you can now write the beautiful Apple applications in a much shorter time. As you start building a Swift UI, we learned that Apple has made some changes to the life cycles. And you probably wonder, has anything changed with Firebase? Well, this is what today's agenda is about. First, we're gonna talk about what is the best way to initialize Firebase in the Swift UI app? Then we're gonna add it, uh, we're gonna talk about some of the new things we added in the SDKs. So now using Firebase in the Swift UI app is much easier. And lastly, we're gonna take advantage of the things we learned today uh, in the real life examples to show you how to run your app with confidence. And to demonstrate all this, we're gonna write the recipe app together. Uh, this is a Swift UI app that me and my colleague Peter Fraze, which is in the, in the crowd here, uh, we built the app together for just about two weeks' time. I would have to give credit to Peter, who is a phenomenal app uh, developer, uh, who built this beautiful app here. And we use SwiftUI's navigation API that connects to the cloud, um, Google's cloud's products to display some delicious looking recipes. I hope you'll be hungry by the end of the talk to try out the new features in your app as well. But first, let's add Firebase to our app. After you register your app, download the plist file. You can now install the SDK directly from your Xcode using the Swift package manager. And now it shows a Swift UI version of the code to show you how to initialize Firebase. Let's take a closer look. Now if you start with a Swift UI lifecycle of the application, the app now launches with a custom struct that conforms to an app protocol. However, we still recommend to initialize Firebase in App Delegate to, to retrieve the best results. So you're gonna use a UI application delegate adapter, which is a property wrapper. What it does is that it tells the Swift UI to use your own App Delegate. And then inside your own App Delegate, you can now initialize Firebase just like you used to. Now that we started with Firebase, let's talk about what exactly the products that we use to really quickly help us ramped up our development flow so we can enter this foodie market in a much shorter time. First, you want to get your users logged in. Your users are uploading their personal information. You want to make sure they're protected. For this case, my grandma's secret recipe. After your users log in, you can now upload your recipe information to the cloud. Here we're using Cloudfire Store to serve the database and the Firebase storage to serve the file storage. For this case, you will upload the images of the recipe to the cloud. So that later when your user sign in from a different device, they're able to retrieve their information as well. And here, all our cloud products are built on Google Cloud, which give you the infinite scalabilities. It means that when your app becomes viral, like TikTok viral, when there's millions of users coming into your server, you don't have to worry about your server get crashed because Google Cloud just automatically take care of that. And Firebase authentication provides a variety of security providers, from email passwords to a list of social media login, including Facebook, 
Google sign in, Twitter, and sign in with Apple. It also supports Game Center login for game developers. After you log in with your users, now it's time to set up the recipe information in the database. Here we're using Firestore, which is a NoSQL real-time database. It supports real-time read and write between your app and the cloud. Here I want to introduce to you this new property wrapper called Firestore Query. It makes it much easier for the user in Swift UI. It's really powerful, and it does two things. The first thing is, traditionally when you fetch in Firestore data, it becomes like a data object, and you still have to decode it so you can access as the internal information. For this case, the recipe. I'm trying to replay the videos. Let's do it again. Yeah, traditionally you have decoded, but with this property wrapper, you don't have to decode anymore. And the second magic is a live sync with your UI. So let's you see on this demo, um, anything you change on the console, which is in the cloud, it automatically reflects on, on your app. With property wrapper, you don't have to do anything extra to tell the UI, hey, it's time to refresh, because property wrapper automatically listens to the change of the parameter, just like a state object. And the best part is, it only takes one line to implement this. This is really convenient. Here I want to call out, this is a collaboration with one of our open source contributor, whose name is Flo. This is what I love about having an open source developer community, where Flo is able to detect the use case that works for him, and he worked with Firebase team to launch this feature, so now all the Firebase users can use this. Now let's take a look at how we can set this up. First, we're gonna use Firestore console to set up the data. So you wanna start with a collection called recipes, and inside it has a list of documents. Each document represents a recipe. And on the third column, it, it shows all the fields you wanna set up, which is the property of the recipe, like description, name, image location, etc. And now let's go to the Swift UI app. We're gonna start writing a struct of a recipe with a list of variables that mapping to the data that you set up on the console. Here we're conformed to a codable protocol. Because we added the codable support, now it's much easier to encode and decode data between this recipe object and your Firestore data. But with the property wrapper, it's even easier. Now you just have to specify this one line of code, and you don't have to handle decoding anymore. So by creating a Firestore query, by giving a collection path, well for this case, the recipes, and it automatically transit whatever on the console to this array of recipe. And now you can directly use it in the UI. And here we integrate over all the elements in the recipes and display the information to this app. And now that we realize the beauty and the power of property wrapper, we add in remote config as well. Now you can define a property wrapper that listens to a config key. So if you need multiple config parameters in your UI app, you can define multiple prop, uh, property wrappers. And then it automatically sync with your UI whenever your config is activated. Here we want to emphasize that you still control when the remote config is activated. And this is another collaboration with one of our open source contributor, whose name is Fumito. As Firebase team is trying to modernize our SDKs, developers like you, Flow, or Fumito, are the driving force to shape the future of our SDKs. Because you're building the app, you have the first-hand experiences, and you live through your pain points. And each of you have a different kind of business. So we really encourage you to voice your feedback. And use GitHub channel as the communication, no matter if file feature requests, bug issues, or even just like send out pull, pull request. I'm really looking forward to seeing more of these kind of collaborations coming up in the future. And here's how we implement it. We start with a remote config property by providing a config uh, key that you want to listen to. And here, there's a fallback value. It, it is used when there's no, for example, if there's a config key that doesn't exist in the remote config system, or maybe you put in a typo. And then the value will return as a no. But if you don't check in your UI code, it will crash because Swift is a strict type language. So to make it easy for you, you cannot have a fallback value to always tell this property wrapper to fall back to a default value if such value doesn't exist. 
And now you can use this config value directly in your UI. And you can also call in remote config to fetch and activate um, when this view uh, component uh, be become visible to your app so that the property wrapper always listen to the latest activated config values. And this is how it shows that in the app. Now you can see the system images has changed to a, to a, from a circle shape to a square shape. Now let's take a look at how exactly we can take advantage of these things we just learned into a real life examples. One of the greatest things of using remote config is to launch your features in a more controlled fashion, right? You want to, um, perhaps you don't want your users to always download new versions whenever you launch a new feature. And you also want to perhaps just roll out to a small group of users before you launch to the general public. And while you're targeting a small group of users, you might also like monitor for crashes and performance. And if you detect anything that is unexpected, you can find the root cause, fix the issue, and then launch it when you're confident. I can do this whole flow with Firebase products without building your in-house solution. For our case, we want to launch a mini game, but we weren't sure how the public receive it. So we're thinking to launch it only to a specific audience. We're thinking the vegans. Here we're using an analytics screen API in the Google Analytics SDK. Uh, what it does is it logs an analytics screen view event that you can specify an actual parameter. For here, we type in the recipe type. Because this is implemented with a uh, custom view modifier internally, so it makes it more Swift UI friendly. You can now call this directly attached to any view components in your Swift UI. So for here, we're attached to a recipe detail view. So what it does is, anytime a user type into a recipe, we're logging the device type, recipe type. So now we collect all this recipe type that our users are tapping into. And now we want to focus on the vegan. So we're going to the analytics console by creating an audience called vegan lovers. And it has the screen view event contains the parameter only contains vegan. And now you can enable this feature by going to the remote config console by creating a condition that with a matching audience in Google Analytics with a vegan lover. And now you let the game run for a while. You observe the data from Google Analytics and the Crash Analytics dashboard. And it seems that you get a lot of retention from analytics results and with minimum crashes. Now you're confident to roll out this feature. And that's it. If you're curious about more of this kind of customization or A-B testing, check out the app personalization feature in Remote Config. And don't forget to check out our repo in GitHub. This is the best channel where you can contact me and my team directly regarding talking about more of your business uh, use case or follow a feature request. I hope you enjoy the rest of your stay in New York City and thank you for listening in.